The Scriptures More Precious Than Gold by Charles Bridges Well might David acknowledge the benefit of affliction, since he had thus learned in God's statutes something that was better to him than thousands of gold and silver. This was indeed an enlightened judgment for one to form, who had so small a part of the law of God's mouth, and so large a portion of this world's treasure. And yet, if we study only his book of Psalms to know the important uses and privileges of this law, and his son's book of Ecclesiastes to discover the real value of paltry gold and silver, Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verses 9 to 20, and chapter 6 verses 1 to 2, we shall, under divine teaching, be led to make the same estimate for ourselves. Yes, believer, with the same, or rather with far higher delight than the miser calculates his thousands of gold and silver, do you tell out the precious contents of the law of your God? After having endeavored in vain to count the thousands in your treasure, one single name sums up their value, the unsearchable riches of Christ, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 8. Would not the smallest spot of ground be estimated at thousands of gold and silver, were it known to conceal under its surface a mine of inexhaustible treasure? This it is that makes the word so inestimable. It is the field of the hidden treasure, the pearl of great price, Matthew chapter 13 verses 44 to 46, is known to be concealed here. You would not, therefore, part with one leaf of your Bible for all the thousands of gold and silver. You know yourself to be in possession of the substance, you have found all besides to be a shadow. I lead, saith the Savior, in the way of righteousness, in the midst of the paths of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. Proverbs chapter 8 verses 20 to 21. The grand motive, therefore, in searching the scriptures, is because they testify of Christ. John chapter 5 verse 39. A sinner has but one want, a savior. A believer has but one desire, to know and win Christ. Philippians chapter 3 verses 8 to 10. With a single eye, therefore, intent upon one point, he studies this blessed book. With unveiled face he beholds in this glass the glory of the Lord, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18, and no arithmetic can compute the price of that which is now unspeakably better to him than the treasures of the earth. Christian, bear your testimony to your supreme delight in the book of God. You have here opened the surface of much intellectual interest and solid instruction. But it is the joy that you have found in the revelation of the Savior, in his commands, in his promises, in his ways, that leads you to exclaim, More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Psalms 19.10 Yes indeed, every promise, every declaration centering in him is a pearl, and the word of God is full of these precious pearls. If then they be the richest who have the best and the largest treasure, those who have most of the word in their hearts, not those who have most of the world in their possession, are justly entitled to this preeminence. Let then the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, Colossians chapter 3 verse 16, for those who are rich in this heavenly treasure are men of substance indeed. True, this is a correct estimate of the worth of God's law, better than this world's treasure. But is it better to me? Is this my decided choice? How many will inconsiderately acknowledge its supreme value, while they yet hesitate to relinquish even a scanty morsel of earth for an interest in it? Do I then habitually prefer this law of God's mouth to every worldly advantage? Am I ready to forego every selfish consideration, if it may only be the means of uniting my heart more closely to the book of God? If this be not my practical conviction, I fear I have not yet opened the mind. But if I can assent to this declaration of the man of God, I have made a far more glorious discovery than Archimedes, and therefore may take up his expression of joyful surprise. Eureka I have found it, I have found it. What? That which the world could never have given me, that of which the world can never deprive me. Yet how affecting is it to see men poor in the midst of great riches? Often in the world, we see the possessor of a large treasure without a heart to enjoy it, virtually, therefore, a pauper. Oftener still in the church do we see professors, may it not be so with some of us, with their Bibles in their hands, yet poor even with the external interest in its unsearchable riches. Often also do we observe a want of value for the whole law or revelation of God's mouth. 
Some parts are highly honored to the depreciation of the rest. But let it be remembered that the whole of Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is therefore profitable for its appointed end. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 16 to 17. Oh, beware of resting satisfied with a scanty treasure. Prayer and diligence will bring out not only things new, but the old also with a new and brighter glow. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Scraping the surface is a barren exercise. Digging into the bowels is a most enriching employ. No vein in this mine is yet exhausted. And rich indeed shall we be, if we gather only one atom of the gold each day in prayerful meditation. But as you value your progress and peace in the ways of God, as you have an eye to your Christian perfection, put away that ruinous thought, true as an encouragement to the weak, Zechariah chapter 4 verse 10, but false as an excuse to the slothful, Proverbs chapter 13 verse 4, that a little knowledge is sufficient to carry us to heaven. And Lord, help me to prize the law as coming from thy mouth, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. Let it be forever written upon my heart. Let me be daily exploring my hidden treasures. Let me be enriching myself and all around me with the present possession and interest in these heavenly blessings. This concludes the reading of The Scriptures More Precious Than Gold by Charles Bridges. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button so that videos like these can spread to more people. Also consider subscribing to our channel so you can easily find more readings of old Puritan sermons. Thank you so much for following along and we'll catch you in the next video.